What's up guys, Justin here from DeSketchUpEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So um, as a lot of you know, I am at Basecamp, and uh, I put out a video earlier this morning just talking a little bit about that, but I figured since I'm here and I'm talking about SketchUp, I might as well put out SketchUp tutorials while I'm here too. And so one of the things I wanted to put out is I wanted to put out, I've been looking at this railing outside my window while I'm working on presentations and thinking, okay, how would we model that in SketchUp? And so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. And so uh, let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first of all, sorry in advance, I'm having to keep this a little bit simple just because I'm still working on presentations and there's a whole lot of stuff going on. But uh, basically this is a railing that happens outside my window. And I wanted to show you an easy way to model that using SketchUp. And so what we're going to do in this case is you could probably use an extension like Profile Builder to make something a lot more robust. But in this case, I'm just going to make a quick railing using groups and components and just kind of show you how that would work. So um, to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to basically model our... We're going to start off and we're going to draw our path for our railing. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to come in here and add our vertical pickets and also our profiles for our bottom and top rail. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw, I'm, I'm actually going to start off and I'm just going to draw the path that this would go along. So I'm just going to use the line tool and I'm just kind of guessing and I'm actually going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to use a line that uh, basically is easier to divide into. But we're going to say this is going to be 12 feet and then we're going to say that the turn here is going to be maybe something like four feet or something like that. So we have our general rail path and now what we need to do is we need to model our profiles that we're going to extrude along this path. And so to start off I'm going to I'm going to draw a box just kind of off to the side. I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw just a rectangular box. And basically what I did there is I just drew a line off to the side and then I tapped the R key. And if you tap the left arrow key, this will lock this to the green axis. And basically what I want to do is I want to look at these different rails and kind of draw a profile that I think is close. So in this case, the bottom rail is pretty simple. It's almost like a rectangle with a little bit of a curve on it. And then the top rail is a little more complicated. But I'm going to go ahead and draw the bottom rail. And basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to, we'll use a guide using the tape measure tool. And we'll just draw something off of this, maybe an inch either way. And how tall did I make this? About eight inches. That may be a little tall, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to draw an arc along this face. And then I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to copy that off to the side. I'm going to use the scale tool to flip it. And then I'm going to move this back. Then I'm going to erase out my extra. So now I have a profile that I can kind of extrude along the bottom here. And uh, that doesn't look exactly like what's in the picture, but I think it's probably close enough. I may actually use the scale tool to scale it down just a little bit. Um, so I may scale it down, maybe, you know, we'll leave it as is. And so now what I want to do is I want to extrude that along this, uh, this path. So I'm going to erase out my guides, and I'm actually going to move this down. And then I'm going to move it over so that it's centered on this path. Whoops. And so now we're going to extrude this along the path. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a copy of the path using the move tool in copy mode. And we'll copy that up maybe like four feet or something like that for right now, just so I have it. And then I'm just going to select my line. I'm going to use the follow me tool and I'm going to extrude this along that line. So you can see how that gives me kind of my bottom profile. And again, that doesn't look exactly like what's in the image, but it gives you a good idea of kind of the workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do reverse faces. And so now I'm going to do the same thing for the top rail. And so for the top rail, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to use the rotate tool or the rectangle tool. And in this case, I'm actually going to tap the control key and that allows me to do this about center. And so when I do this about center, you can see how I can center a rectangle on this line. Well, now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to kind of draw out. Um, I'm going to very much ballpark this, but I'm going to draw out kind of a profile of what that top rail might look like. And... In this case, I'm just going to draw a little arc off of this corner like this. I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode to copy that. And then we'll go ahead and flip that. And then we'll use the move tool 
to move it back and then we can erase out our extra and so now i can kind of adjust this because i don't like the way that profile looks at all if i push pull that out that's going to look weird so i'm just going to use the scale tool in uniform scaling mode to scale it down and maybe scale it across a little bit just to make it look a little bit smoother and so now i'm just going to select this line activate the follow me tool and then click on this so now i have a top rail and i have a bottom rail and so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create our vertical pickets. And if you look at this, these are actually alternating pickets. We're going to model them all as a single picket, and then I'll show you a way to kind of swap everything out. And so the first thing I want to do, because this corner is going to get a little weird, I think, is I'm actually going to draw a line from here to the midpoint. And then probably a line over here so I can get an idea of how long this is going to be. And in this case, this edge is about 12 feet. Well, what I want to do is I want to offset this corner by about 6 inches. So I'm just going to use the uh, tape measure tool in order to draw a guide that's off by about 6 inches. And then I can go ahead and I can split this line and I can erase out my extra. That way now I have a line that I can basically... Uh, that I can basically multiply this along knowing that I need to give this a little bit of an offset. I'm probably going to do the same thing over here. So we'll just use the tape measure tool, we'll offset this by about six inches, and we'll draw a little segment off of here and we'll erase all this out. Whoops. Maybe I'll just draw a segment that's about six inches on top of this one to split that, and then we'll erase that out. So now I have a path that I can copy this along. And so what I want to do is, first of all, I want to make sure I've put all of this geometry in groups so that I don't have things merging all over the place. So I'm just triple clicking and then right clicking and clicking the button for make group. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I'm going to tap the control key to make this be about center again. And we're going to go ahead and we'll make this four by four seems big. Maybe we'll make it three by three. And in reality, all of this is going to be scaled a little bit differently. But for right now, we'll just kind of use that dimension. So I'm just going to push pull that up. And you can see how even that is very thick. So maybe what I'll do is I'll draw a rectangle that's... We'll make it a one by one for right now. And we're going to make these components so we can adjust them a little bit later. The scale is just a little bit off on this whole thing. Maybe we'll go two by two. And again, this wouldn't really be two by two in real life, but that's okay. So basically what I've done is I've push pulled this all the way up. And so now I have a vertical picket. Well, what I want to do is I want to select this and I want to right click and I want to make it a component. And we can go ahead and we can call this something like picket. And then all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the move tool in copy mode to create copies of this equally spaced along this length. So I'm going to find the midpoint of this object, I'm going to activate the move tool and then I'm going to just tap the control key. Then I'm going to move my mouse over here until I'm level with this line. So you can see I'm getting a little inference point. If you don't get that, notice I'm holding the shift key to lock this to the red axis. If you don't get that, you can hold the shift key and move your mouse over a point like this and you're going to go ahead and click. And before you do anything else, you want to go ahead and you want to type in divided by and then the number of pickets you want. So in this case, I typed in divided by 12. I could do divided by 14, divided by 16. You can see I'm basically just uh, using that tool in order to create a certain number of pickets in here. So that's one way to do this is use the move tool in copy mode. Um, what I don't like about that is it's not very precise. So I'm actually going to do an undo and I'm actually going to select this segment that I left in here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select divide. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to find a certain number of segments in here that corresponds with a value that I like. Whoops. So you can just right click and click divide and you can see how as I move my mouse, it's telling me the length between those segments. And I'm trying to find something that's a little bit of a round number, but it doesn't really seem to like that very much. Um, probably because I'm off by about half the width of this, but we'll go ahead and we'll select 
22 segments. That gives me six and a quarter inches between each one of these. So you can see how now basically what this did is this uh, split this up into a bunch of six and a quarter inch segments. And so now I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to make copies of this. So I'm going to tap the M key then I'm going to come and click on this corner. I'm going to tap the control key to activate copy mode and I'm just going to click Basically, I'm going to find this point and then I'm going to move over here on the red axis and I'm going to click. Now, if I t come in here and I type something like times 22 and hit the enter key, that's too many. So we'll type in times 20 or times 19 and hit the enter key. And you can see how what that did is that basically um, that basically created 19 copies all spaced at that six inch mark. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're just going to right click on this line. We're going to divide it the same way and we're just going to get close. We may be off a little bit. I'm okay with that for this exercise. Um, mostly because I didn't feel like doing math this morning. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode. We're going to make a copy over here. And I'm actually going to cheat a little bit because this actually didn't end up right on that line for some reason. Um, so I'm just going to cheat this over on that corner just to keep the video moving forward. Uh, you'll have to do a little bit more math in order to get these exactly centered. But again, I'm just going to basically make a copy of this. And I'm using those same points. And I'm just going to type in times 5 or times 7 and hit the enter key. And so you can see how now what I have is I have a railing that's got all of these different pickets and they're all centered on this line. And so if you remember, these are all components. So I can come in here and I can adjust these. And uh, basically when I adjust these, if one of them updates, all of them update because they're uh, instances of the same component. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to select every other one. So you can see I'm just doing a shift click on every other one. And then I'm going to right click on those and I'm going to click make unique. And basically what I've done is now I've made those a unique copy of that component. So you can see how now every other one of these is adjusting. And so what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to add that, that uh, decorative little piece right in the middle. So this guy right here, we're going to use the follow me tool in order to do that. Um, and a cool trick is if you remember, because these are components, I can actually bring one of these off to the side and I can edit this one and all the other ones will change in place. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to draw like a, basically a flat canvas coming off to the side. I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode to copy it down. And then I'm just going to detail out what I think what I think the profile of this is going to look like and then we'll use the follow me tool in order to adjust that. So in this case this isn't going to be exact but in this case I'm going to do a little arc maybe right here. So in this case we'll do a little arc between these two midpoints like this and then we'll go ahead I'll draw a little arc a little inside arc right here. And then we'll draw an arc to close this off. So, and again, it's, it's not the perfect profile, but it ought to work. Well, now you can just select these. You can use the move tool in copy mode to copy them down and probably off to the side actually, and then just use the scale tool to flip it. And then you can move this down so that it lines up and you probably want to go ahead and select this edge actually. So basically all I did is I just came in here and drew kind of what I thought that profile might look like. Now I can just come in here and if you remember the follow me tool doesn't require things that you extrude with the tool to actually be touching them. So what I can do is I can select the bottom of this to be the path. I can activate the follow me tool then I can click on this and this will extrude that in a circle. And if you feel like this is big, you could do an undo and you could maybe like scale it down. You know, that might do some kind of weird stuff to your geometry. So I wouldn't mess around with that too much, but you can adjust that before you extrude it to get the look that you're looking for. So just select this face, activate, follow me, and then click on this corner. And then now you can go ahead and you can delete this out. 
and I really don't like the way that that turned out. So I'm going to make a copy of this off to the side. I'll erase this stuff out so that I'm not accidentally adjusting this object. And maybe what we'll do is we'll just scale it in a little bit and then we'll scale it in here so it's not quite pronounced. And then we'll just move the midpoint back and we'll just try it again. There we go, I like that a lot better. So you can use this method to create repeating rails over and over again within SketchUp. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.